Alex, uh, let me go to you for a moment. Just talk to me about how the Jewish community are feeling, because, of course, when this first happened, a lot of people assumed uh, this is a terror attack. We now know, as David said, it wasn't. I imagine there's a lot of relief in the Jewish community, but, of course, that was soured by the fact that people tried to identify a young Jewish uni student as the killer. Yeah, well, Danica and I spoke just a few days ago on Friday, and at that point in time, the world was troubling and complex enough. And then in the intervening days, we've seen one of the most horrific incidents I can recall as an Australian, which happened in my backyard, very close to where I live, a place where I go with my family on, on at least a weekly basis. Uh, and then, as you said, there were these outrageous accusations that the assailant was a Jew, which was deliberately inserted in social media by activists by influencers designed to heap more hatred upon the Jewish community, perhaps even start a race war. And then we saw the appalling scenes from Israel where we had a horrific act of war by Iran. So it's been, you know, a harrowing, chilling period of time for the Jewish community, which we're kind of used to with the past six months. But um, certainly the attack at Bonai Junction was a horrific thing. And once the initial fear that this was a terror attack passed, our primary concern as all Australians was for the dead, for the injured, for the fact that something like this could happen in our country, in our suburbs, in our shopping centres. It's just a baffling incident and one of the most horrific things we've seen in this country for a long, long time. Yeah, it certainly is. I mean, I think we're all still stunned about what happened. Absolutely. Um, just moving forward now, David, there are mass anti-Israel protests planned around the country for tomorrow. Protesters are promising to block key choke points to inflict economic pain. Now, these organisers have refused to give police details in order to create maximum disruption. What will the police response to this be like? Well, that's an offence. If you're protesting and you don't have a police permit, well, that's that's an offence. Nobody denies... The police certainly are the last ones to deny anybody the right to express their political opinion in Australia, but if they're doing it without the appropriate authority, well, that's a defence. Can, can I ask you something on that? Because a lot of people say during COVID, do you remember police arrested a woman for posting about a protest on Facebook? Mm. So if it's an offence, why haven't police gone and sought out the leaders of these protests planned well, for tomorrow and taken, uh, you know... Well, I, I'd be very surprised if they don't know exactly who's um, uh, going to be organising the protest tomorrow, and I'd be very surprised if those people aren't under surveillance mm. um, by a number of law enforcement agencies, both here and overseas. Mm. But um, my message to um, uh, the police was that, you know, they will get all the political air cover that they need from most reasonable politicians if they take the maximum amount of authority or use the maximum amount of authority they've got available to them. Yeah, yeah. And, and Alex, just a question to you on that. As this pro-Palestine protest is uh, scheduled across the country tomorrow, how is the Jewish community feeling about it? Well, I think like all Australians, we're sick and tired of this stuff. And we've seen for six months, we've seen from the very evening of the October 7 attacks before Israel even commenced its response to those atrocities, people on our streets celebrating, glorifying unspeakable crimes against civilians. And we've been seeing it on a rolling basis throughout our country. And we've had enough. I mean, these protests masquerade as being about you know, peace and calls for a humanitarian ceasefire. But when you probe deeper and look at the rhetoric, the signs, the chants, the individuals who are driving these protests, they want war, they want killing, they just want Israel to lose. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow, if they protest, they'll be cheering for the Houthis as they've done throughout. Yep. They'll be cheering for Hezbollah, for yep. Hamas and yep. for the Iranian regime. All right. Alex Rivchin and David Elliott, we've got to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Pleasure.